Hey, Steve Mignani here with some really good junkyard news. If you're gonna be anywhere near Sherman, Texas on March 24th and 25th, know that there's gonna be an outdoor auction uh, put on by Duncan'sAuctions.com of over 200 solid Texas parts vehicles. It's gonna be Fords, GM, Mopar, lots of tractors and even forklifts. These things all have to go. It's an online auction, but also an on-site auction. If you happen to be in Sherman, Texas, you can go and bid in person or again online but all 200 vehicles have to go don't let them get crushed to learn more about this auction which happens on march 24th and 25th of 2023 uh, check it out on duncansauctions.com and keep in mind if you're seeing this after march 24th or 25th 2003 the auction's over with but before then make sure you check it out and save some of these cars don't let them go to the crusher Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the junkyard crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts with a 1969 Ford Mustang Coupe. Now, here's the thing, you know, Mustang was the first pony car, 64 and a half, 65, 670,000 cars sold. I mean, really created a market segment. Without Mustang, there wouldn't be a Camaro, there wouldn't be a Firebird, probably wouldn't be a Cougar, wouldn't be a Javelin, wouldn't be a Dodge Challenger. You know, it was a very special car, but by 1969, there was so much competition in the pony car segment that sales actually fell 34% versus 1968, despite a new body. Uh, and in fact, of the 299,824 Mustangs sold in 1969, about half or 150,640 were coupes like this one. That is to say that the rest were convertibles, a very small number, or fastbacks or sports roofs. But again, these coupes were the cheapest ones, the most affordable ones. Now this one here, again, being a 1969, has the quad headlights, which would be in their final year. 1970, Ford would get rid of the outboard lights and give the car kind of a facelift. And 69 and 70 were the last two years for this body style before 71 when things got really big. Now this one's kind of weird. Uh, it could be a Mach 1 because we see here the outline of where the fake hood scoop would have gone. And I don't think this is somebody's add-on. These little studs, these puppies right here, would have been threaded into the bottom of the fiberglass hood scoop and then on the bottom of these would be those nuts that would lock it down. And the hooded skin, hood skin itself, is also specific to the fake Mach 1 style hood. These little piercing, piercings right here are there to allow the lights for the directionals that are in the back of the scoop to pass through. So this skin is definitely from a Mach 1 or a GT. But again, is this car a Mach 1? Let's look under the hood and see. Okay, well, that is a 302, I'm pretty sure. And again, the Mach 1 was 351 two barrel on up. So the 302 uh, probably was either swapped in or this car was a Mach 1, not sure, hard to say. We'll have to look a little harder. But again, this one here, this is the 302, which is a $105 upcharge over the base 200 cubic inch six banger. And believe it or not, there was a 250 cubic inch six that was available for $25.91. Now this engine here kind of gives us a nice look at Ford's take on ball stud or, you know, ball, spherical ball uh, rocker arms, which Chevrolet used in 1955. But Ford, instead of using stamped steel rockers, these are cast aluminum uh, or some sort of a zinc type or a material, probably aluminum of some kind anyway, but these are cast rocker arms that are different from Chevrolet's one-piece stamped steel items. Of course, the Ford small block has the distributor up front, which is good and bad. Chevy has it at the back where it's closer to the firewall, but Ford has it up front, which is a little easier to get at. You choose which one you prefer. But again, this is a 302, almost assuredly, and something that's kind of neat about the 302 and the 256 banger is that they came with five lug wheels. Well, check this out all the way up to 1970 if you got a 200 cubic inch base six in your mustang you got four lug wheels and a nine inch drum all the way around and this one's kind of rotted out but again it's amazing to think to cut costs as low as possible when you got the 200 cubic inch base six in your mustang in 68 69 70 you got four lug Falcon parts for suspension. And for 25 bucks more, when you went to the 250 cubic inch engine, you got 10 inch drums, five lugs all the way around. So it is kind of weird. A 200 cube six banger in one of these things got you the four lug wheels. Kind of weird, but it's real. Inside, of course, uh, we notice this one is the two door hard top. And here's that somewhat formal roof line right here. Not the graceful sports roof, but again, about half of all Mustangs in 69 were this car here. 
But here's a dealer brochure showing the beauty of the new Mach 1. 1969, first year for the Mach 1. This one has the shaker, the hood pins, which could be deleted if you wanted, but most people took them. And let's take a peek through this catalog. And again, this is the new Mustang sports roof right here. Somebody finally built a better Mustang. Yeah, Ford did until 1970 when they made it even better. So you'd say Mach 1, here it is. And again, the Mach 1 in its first year for 1969, much of the looks and performance of a Shelby with about 30% less price. So the Mach 1 really kind of was the final nail in the Shelby Mustang dynasty. Here's the hard top we're looking at right here. And one thing you'll notice in all hard tops and coupes and convertibles, this one is the base three-speed manual. And Mustang always had the shifter on the floor, which if you ask me is a very sporty touch. Camaro and Firebird and even Challenger and Barracuda, the shifter could be had up on the column, which is kind of grandpa. But anyway, going further, here's the Grande, which is interesting, but, uh, you know, kind of a fluffier version of Mustang. And again, here's the Select Shift Automatic right there. Select Shift, by the way, was standard on all automatic Mustangs. And what that means, you could hold first and second gears for as long as you wanted, well, till about five grand. And of course, here's the Mustang convertible right there, beautiful car. And then here is the story of the, uh, the options. Here's the uh, Decor Group steering wheel right there. Not seen in this car, we'll get to that in a minute. But the brakes, here it is right here, kind of weird. It says brakes with a 200 cubic inch six, 154 square inches, or sorry, 131. With the 250, 154 with the six banger, etc. So kind of weird, the bigger ones had 174, but if you got the six banger, that 131 square inch meant you had nine inch drums and four lug wheels. Yep, all the way through 1970. Crazy stuff. And again, this one here is headrest, standard equipment on all Mustangs built after January 1st, 69. In early part of 69, they were optional, but they were federally mandated after January 1st. There, there's the select shift automatic on the floor down there. And again, never ever will you find a column shifted Mustang. There's the base steering wheel, not the sport steering wheel, which would have had a wood tone rim. And uh, otherwise, you know, looking kind of like any other Mustang. The dashboards in these things were pretty much universal. On this one, the rear suspension is gone. And keep in mind, uh, if this was a, um, a 250 on up, that'd be an eight inch rear axle. Uh, the 351, 390s, 428s had a nine inch. Uh, but if this had the 200 cube, the four lugs, it'd be a seven and a half inch Falcon axle under this thing. But this one's long gone. But here again, we come around to the back. And again, a little bit bigger trunk lid, in fact. Uh, the trunk opening on the hard top was deeper than on the fastback, which would have been about half this length. And again, 1969, the triple taillights here, 1970, become a one-piece unit. Similar, but not the same. And something kind of cool, if you were a little kid in 1969, maybe you had one of these. This is the original issue, AMT Gas Ronda Long Nose Mustang. And it's got the Logie Brothers chassis right here. It's actually extended wheelbase, which is something that uh, the funny cars had at this point in time. And inside the free 33 and a third RPM record, Sounds of Drag Racing Part 2, Funny Cars. Is it still there? Let's put it on the roof and take a peek. This model right here, I bought this on eBay. And I remember when I was a kid, about 10 years old at Morton's Department Store in North Brookfield, Mass, saying, I want one of those. Mom wouldn't let me have it. Well, now I finally got one thanks to eBay. But anyway, inside the original body, still wrapped and sealed in the plastic with that long, long, long nose body right there and all the Logie Brothers chassis stuff. Doesn't look very exciting in white plastic, but trust me, with paint and stuff, it's a cool model. And this one, of course, has the, uh, Here's the chrome parts, the steering wheel, the front tube axle, all the radius rods. Best of all, this is so cool. The spindle mount, wheels up front, the 427 camera, valve covers right there, and the Mustang nose, just a cool, cool piece. Instruction sheet, just so full of cool stuff. The decals, still there. Russ Davis Ford and West Covina. Of course, Gas Ronda was a legendary Ford drag racer starting out in the early 60s aboard a uh, Thunderbolt, eventually an overhead cam Mustang. And here's that record right here. Sounds of Drag Racing, part two, funny cars featuring Gas Ronda. And it's the Aura Vision right here from uh, CBS Records right there. Play manual at 33 and a third. And again, this thing here, you would put on your, nobody's ever played this. Look at that, the hole's not there. But if you notice this square, there's a circle right there, which is engraved and etched with the sound makers, I guess. So kind of cool. You know, you gotta love Mustangs, whether they're big or little. And again, 1970 would be the final year for this family of Mustang, this one being a 69. 71, they got bigger, that big crazy flat back Boss 351, 429 Super Cobra, I'll take it. 302, not so much. By 73, 
well, the Mustang pretty much lost its oomph. 74, the Mustang II came out, which was Pinto-based, if you can imagine that, but they sold 350,000 in 1974, so it was the right car for the time. But anyway, 1969, Mustang sales fell. Again, Challenger, Barracuda, all those other competing cars were coming on strong, so they took a big bite out of Ford's pony car apple, if you will. Now, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steenag's YouTube channel. Uh, share this with your friends, tell everybody about it, and be sure to hit the bell so that you're aware when the next video comes out, which is tomorrow morning.